preserved for over 5,000 years in an isolated mountain pass and currently resting in a refrigerated tomb. The Iceman, a survivor from the Stone Age, serves as a messenger from the past, holding secrets of human life nearly a millennium before the construction of the pyramids. Yet, he remains a mystery, waiting to be uncovered. Who was he, and what led to his demise? Recently, a risky autopsy has overturned past theories. DNA, a copper axe, and a last meal have left the scientists surprised. Some 3,000 years before the birth of Christ, on a remote mountainside high in the Alps, this man made his way through the thin mountain air. The man's life would end in mystery. Was he alone, or was he on the run? What made him undertake his last journey? Let's find out. A puzzle for scientists, his body lingered on the mountain for over 5,000 years until September 1991, when two hikers scaling the Italian Alps stumbled upon a chilling sight. The head and shoulders of a man emerging from the ice. Initially, the pathologist presumed this was merely the remains of an unfortunate hiker, one of many lost in the Alps over the years. But this body was peculiar. It displayed almost no signs of decomposition. Its skin and flesh seemed freeze-dried, with hands, feet, and even eyeballs remarkably intact. The mountain air and ice had transformed this corpse into a mummy. During the recovery, some unusual items surfaced. Fragments of leather, handmade rope, and a knife with a flint blade. This was no ordinary wanderer. Preliminary analysis of his gear indicated he was thousands of years old. The discovery sparked a global sensation, and the media labeled him the Iceman of Utsi, named after the Utsi Mountains where he was discovered. Carbon dating confirmed that Utsi perished 5,300 years ago, marking him as the oldest intact human remains ever found. What can they reveal about our own history and the mystery of Utsi's death? For some reason, his final journey led him up this ridge along the valley all the way up. He ascended from about 300 meters to over 3,000 meters. Initially, scientists suspected he was lost in a storm, but accumulating evidence began to suggest something more violent happened to the Iceman. The body was discovered near the current border between Italy and Austria, and the death scene wasn't initially deemed suspicious. The Iceman's primary conservators journeyed to the remote past to reassess the situation. This allowed them to understand the unique circumstances that worked together to preserve the body, found just 100 meters inside the present Italian border. 5,000 years ago, he had ascended a considerable distance, later to be covered by a glacier. Typically, bodies lost in glaciers are carried by the icy river, slowly descending down the mountain amid tons of rock and stone grinding together. Alpine glaciers usually move about 30 meters per year. After a few centuries, most of the debris caught in the glacier surfaces at the bottom along the melting ice's edge. The circumstances surrounding Otzi's demise may have seemed terribly unfortunate, but for archaeologists, he couldn't have ended up in a better spot. The sun and wind completely dried out his body. Rocks on either side formed a small trench. Three meters of snow and ice eventually filled this trench, preventing the Iceman's body from being swept into the icy river surrounding it. A mere 15 meters to the left or right, his body would have been obliterated and lost forever. The mountain shaped the Iceman and safeguarded him for over 50 centuries. In Bolzano, Italy, just 30 miles from where he passed away, he found protection once more in a specially designed museum. His mummified body is displayed, meticulously frozen in a custom crypt with a temperature of minus 6.5 degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of 98%. The doctors overseeing the body aimed to crack the cold case with a rare and risky move. They initiated the thawing process for the Iceman's body, drawing scientists from all around to delve into the five millennia old corpse. They pursued new insights into the Iceman's death and his life during a pivotal era in human civilization. They had a narrow window of nine hours to complete their investigations before refreezing became imperative. Pathologist Eduard Egater Vigel, the custodian of the Iceman for over a decade, led an operation fraught with biological risks. One concern was that entering scientists could introduce bacteria and germs. 
Another was the uncertainty of whether living organisms remain dormant within the mummy and might be reactivated during the defrosting process. If the defrosting caused harm to the body, it would be a significant setback for scientists. Their reliance on the single corpse to illuminate a crucial period in human history added profound significance to the potential loss. 5,000 years ago, Europe marked a time devoid of countries, kings, and even the advent of the wheel. Within these alpine valleys, an increasing population dwelled in modest settlements, commencing the cultivation of crops like wheat and barley, along with the domestication of goats, sheep, and cattle. Simultaneously, others pursued a nomadic lifestyle, hunting wild game. Could intensifying competition between farmers and hunters be linked to Otzi's demise? Predating the introduction of writing to the region by at least 1,000 years, Utsi's remarkably well-preserved remains offer rare insights into prehistoric alpine existence. He was discovered still clad in one of his shoes. In the Bolzano Museum, alpine archaeologist Patrick Hunt collaborated with paleontologist Anna Luisa Pedrotti to meticulously inspect each item, seeking not only revelations about his daily life, but also clues about his final moments. What prompted him to carry these possessions at the time of his death? The shoe, an early and intricately designed example, stands out. While it's improbable for a man from the Stone Age to consistently wear shoes for traversing the rugged slopes and glaciers of the Alps, such footwear would prove essential. These artifacts not only divulge personal details about the bearer, but also attest to the surprising sophistication of Stone Age craftsmanship. His backpack, equipped with a wooden frame, appears almost modern. A leather pouch likely served as a waste pack. Chunks of tree fungus believed to possess medicinal properties function as a rudimentary first aid kit. Maple leaves, ingeniously repurposed, facilitated the transportation of hot embers for fire starting. Utzi's culture possessed knowledge about the utility of every available plant, stone, and wood, utilizing optimal materials. Venturing into the mountains beyond his settlement posed risks due to common encounters with wolves, wild boars, and bears. Clashes between settlements and hunters were also possible, prompting Utsi to carry weapons. In addition to his knife, he wielded a bow and arrows. The oldest quiver ever discovered accompanied meticulously crafted wooden arrows with flint arrowheads affixed to a razor's edge, glued on with pitch made from the sap of a birch tree. Feathers on the shafts were carefully attached to stabilize the arrow in flight. For an unknown reason, the bow and arrows were not ready for immediate use. Carrying a remarkably advanced weapon for his time, Utzi surprised archaeologists with his copper axe, compelling them to reassess the historical timeline. Preceding Utzi, scholars believed alpine cultures learned to smelt and work copper around 2000 BC. However, carbon dating revealed that the Iceman's axe predates this estimate. This indicated his people already possessed the knowledge to heat copper-rich rock up to 1,100 degrees Celsius, sufficiently hot to extract the metal from the ore and create molds for fashioning tools. The discovery of the axe propelled Utzi beyond the era of stone tools by a thousand years earlier than previously believed. For years, scholars presumed that the Iceman froze to death in an alpine storm after his discovery in 1991. However, questions arose about how someone so attuned to his environment could succumb to adverse weather. Despite CT scans and X-rays revealing only non-fatal broken bones, experts continued to search for additional clues to explain his demise. Ten years following the discovery of the Iceman, Dr. Paul Gosner, a Bolzano radiologist, scrutinized images from the Iceman and stumbled upon something peculiar. Upon revisiting the original X-rays, Gosner noticed discrepancies. Consequently, a CT scan was conducted, leaving no room for doubt. Embedded in the Iceman's back was a stone arrowhead. The scans revealed that the arrowhead delivered a fatal blow, piercing a subclavian artery and causing Utsi to bleed out rapidly. Yet the question lingers, who ended the Iceman's life, and for what reason? The quest to unravel this age-old mystery compelled researchers back to the body in the operating theater at the Bolzano Museum. Nearly two dozen international researchers convened for the opportunity to examine the mummy. Their initial goal was to closely inspect the arrowhead. Over two decades, 
scientists garnered substantial knowledge about Utzi from his skeleton. He stood around 5 feet 2 inches tall, with leg muscle development suggesting frequent mountain hiking. The coarseness of his hands hinted at a possible hunter or shepherd rather than a farmer. Examination of his bones disclosed that he met his demise in his 40s, an advanced age for his era, adorned with over 50 enigmatic tattoos signifying his identity. Biological anthropologist Albert Zink led the Institute for Mummies and the Iceman, and alongside Eduard Igar Terwigel, conducted the autopsy. He mentioned, We're all a little bit excited and also nervous because we have a lot to do, and we also have to be sure that the Iceman doesn't have any damage due to this investigation, said Albert Zink. To prevent the body from deteriorating, scientists placed him in a special box, allowing them to move the body without causing harm and without altering the position of the limbs. The post-mortem adhered to a tight schedule, with each group allotted a specific time for their investigations. To access his left shoulder and the arrowhead, doctors swiftly flipped Utzi face down, hoping the arrowhead might unravel one of the main mysteries of Utzi's death. Was he killed in a skirmish with another settlement, or in a territorial dispute with hunters? Or did the arrowhead remain in his back, shot by one of his own, perhaps a jealous rival from his clan? A clue supporting this theory was his advanced copper axe, suggesting Utzi's significant role in his community. Zink and Vigel pondered whether the arrowhead could provide additional answers. With time ticking away, Vigel faced a crucial decision. Up to this point, existing access routes had been utilized. Approving a new incision to extract the Stone Age arrowhead posed an opportunity to delve deeper into the mysteries of the mummy. However, a dilemma emerged. While the desire to unravel the secrets of the Iceman was strong, protecting him from harm took precedence. The Iceman's body represented a preserved landscape, an archaeological site surpassing the age of Stonehenge. Thus, he wasn't just a cold case. He was deemed a cultural treasure. A standard destructive autopsy was out of the question. Utzi stood as a human time capsule, intact for over 5,000 years. Now, the investigators grappled with the decision to risk permanent damage. Despite knowing for a decade that the Iceman was a victim of foul play, the murder weapon remained unseen. It was the final unexamined piece of evidence. The team, on the verge of reaching the arrowhead, faced the dilemma of penetrating the tissue without causing harm. Opting for caution, the chief conservator chose to proceed without making a new incision. While the arrowhead held significance, it wasn't the sole piece of evidence in the case. The theory, suggesting Utzi's demise in a skirmish with a rival settlement or group of hunters, found support in microscopic signs indicating he was on the run in the days before his violent death. Clues were concealed in his intestine. In this region, different trees release their pollen at varying elevations. Hornbeam thrives lower down, while conifer forests cover higher slopes. Utzi's intestine revealed a layer of hornbeam pollen, followed by a layer of conifer, a clear indication of his upward movement on the mountain. Albert Zink said, Oddly enough, we believe he came back down again because there's another layer of hornbeam pollen on top of the conifer pollen, which means he went up for some reason, came back down, and then went back up again to his death. What possesses a man to make such a journey, unless, for life-threatening reasons, he has to move? and there was more forensic evidence that the Iceman was being pursued in the days leading up to his death. On his right hand, a deep cut sliced across the palm, possibly the result of hand-to-hand -hand combat involving a knife. But this warlike scenario had one snag, and it had to do with what must have been the Iceman's most prized possession, his copper axe. Stone carvings found in the valley below where he died featured the same kind of axe prominently, suggesting that the weapon had great symbolic power. Why would the killers leave such a valuable object behind? It makes sense if Utzi is just a victim of a long-distance kill shot, where someone would shoot him, leave the arrow, leave the axe, and run away, said Albert Zink. In the quest for additional insights into Utzi's assailant, a fresh team took their turn examining the body. This group specifically focused on Utzi's brain, searching for traces of blood, Scans of Utzi's skull revealed distinct signs of fracture, and images of the shrunken yet intact brain displayed darker areas, potentially indicative of either blood or decay. If it was blood, 
it served as evidence that he suffered a blunt force trauma to the head just before his demise. Their objective was to uncover evidence of bleeding, supporting the theory that this injury occurred during the dying process. Bleeding occurs when one is still alive or in the process of dying. Did Utzi's skull fracture occur after he was struck by the arrow? Using pincers threaded through holes drilled in Utzi's cranium years ago, they extracted brain samples. Upon analysis, these dark clumps of brain matter tested positive for blood, confirming that Utzi indeed suffered a blow to the head before his death. This raised the possibility that he was either finished off by his assailant at close quarters, or he struck his head on a rock after being hit by the arrow. The investigation spanned hours, with the body thawing rapidly. The scientists shifted their focus from the circumstances of Utzi's death to uncover more details about his life. Utzi held significance, but was he a farmer, a hunter, a shepherd? Was he evading something? The one crucial organ that could provide answers to these questions had been missing for two decades. Now, it was discovered by the same radiologist who found the arrowhead. Dr. Paul Gosner, after years of scanning countless mummy images, stumbled upon an unexpected shape while examining the familiar images one day. He said, Here we have the esophagus, and if you were further down, you would see an image that corresponds to that of an organ, and then grows in a hollow organ. The significant hollow organ that went unnoticed until now was the Iceman's stomach. It might seem improbable that something as fundamental as Utzi's stomach eluded everyone, but it wasn't in its expected location. It had shifted. When a person stands, the stomach descends a bit. If someone lies on their stomach, the stomach pushes upward. If a person lies on their stomach with a load of ice on top of them, the stomach is pushed even further, as Dr. Paul Gosner explained. The team, tasked with examining the stomach, initially attempted the usual approach, passing an endoscope between Utzi's teeth, through his mouth, and down his throat. However, the Iceman's body was too compressed. The team opted for an alternate path, using an existing incision in the abdomen. Here they discovered the stomach almost in his chest, just as Dr. Gosner had predicted. Not only was the stomach in an unexpected position, but it also contained a substantial amount of food, grain, fat, and meat. The initial analysis identified the grain as a type of wheat known as einkorn, one of the earliest grains cultivated by humans. The meat was ibex, a species of wild goat still found in the Alps. This final meal affirmed that the Iceman existed during a pivotal moment in history. He and his people were at the outset of agriculture, yet they still relied on meat from wild game. Utzi himself might have been a hunter linked to a small farming community, but regardless of his livelihood, he enjoyed ample sustenance. After nine hours, Utzi underwent stitching, with holes closed and flaps repositioned, this single day yielded 149 biological samples, providing scientists with material to explore for years to come. Among the most crucial samples was the potential presence of DNA. For a mummy as ancient as Utzi, the techniques for salvaging DNA have only recently advanced sufficiently to extract valuable information. Testing the DNA of the Iceman posed challenges. On one hand, being a wet mummy, Utzi had high humidity, detrimental to DNA preservation. On the other hand, having been frozen for over 5,000 years turned out to be advantageous, as the cold environment preserved the DNA. Fragments of DNA could be reconstructed, offering insights into Utzi's eye color, medical history, and genetic mutations. However, the initial hurdle was the extraction of the DNA. Isolating the Iceman's DNA necessitated collaborative efforts from various specialists. Angela Grafen, a researcher at Albert Zink's lab played a role in assembling Utzi's genetic profile. A few days later, Angela's lab accomplished the initial phase, yielding a blend of clear water and pure DNA with a golden hue. Utzi's sample made its way to a lab in the United States, presenting a unique challenge. Ancient DNA differed significantly from modern DNA for various reasons. One major hurdle with ancient DNA was contamination. This occurs when the donor's DNA mixes with DNA from an external source, be it a microbe or another human being. Countless people have interacted with the mummy over the years, leaving traces of their own DNA. Therefore, 
Vigel and Zink extracted samples from deep within Utzi's bones, relying on the outer bone to act as a natural seal, safeguarding the inner bone from contamination. Vigel's precision paid off, resulting in remarkably pure extracted DNA. 97% belonged to Utzi, but there was a puzzling 3% that didn't match. We discovered an intriguing surprise in examining this contamination. A significant portion was actually linked to a microbe causing Lyme disease, he explained. Lyme disease, transmitted to humans by ticks, can lead to symptoms such as muscle weakness, severe joint swelling, and arthritis if left untreated. While Lyme disease is prevalent today, the microbial DNA found in Nazi's genes indicated that the disease dates back to at least the Stone Age. It marked the oldest trace of Lyme disease ever identified. Utzi's ancient DNA was groundbreaking. His DNA was directly linked to an actual body. Yet there were more revelations in store. On the chromosomes of the genes that determine eye color, there was a marker showing that Utzi had brown eyes. On another series of pairs, they found that Lyme disease was not the only ailment Utzi shared with 21st century humans. Utzi has become a fascinating subject of study through the lens of modern genetic analysis. Despite leading a lifestyle characterized by exercise and an organic diet, Utzi's genome presented unexpected findings, notably a marker for heart disease. This revelation prompted questions about the origins of such ailments, commonly perceived as modern, and challenged the assumption that 5,000 years constitute significant time in human genetic development. The idea that many diseases are, in fact, ancient and predate our civilization challenges conventional thinking. Utzi's genetic makeup, nearly unchanged from ours, suggests that certain health conditions existed long before the emergence of what we consider modern society. This is exemplified by Utzi's arterial condition, resembling that of a contemporary 40-year-old male, despite his active lifestyle and dietary habits. Exploring Utzi's genetic traits unveiled additional insights. He was lactose intolerant, a condition common in the Stone Age, with the ability to digest milk being a later adaptation in some populations. The genetic analysis places Utzi in a dynamic era marked by transitions from nomadic hunting to settling farming communities, offering a glimpse into the societal changes of his time. The mystery surrounding Utzi's life and death persists, with DNA analysis hinting at the societal shifts he experienced. The absence of information about his identity and role in his culture fuels speculation, including the possibility that he was pursued by enemies. However, a closer examination of the circumstances surrounding his demise, including the peculiar absence of the arrow that killed him and the presence of his valuable copper axe near his body, raises intriguing questions. An unexpected revelation emerges from the autopsy as researchers analyze contents from Utzi's stomach. The examination of his last meal, a substantial combination of meat and grain, challenges the narrative of a man fleeing for his life. The sizable amount of barely digested food indicates that Utzi consumed a significant meal shortly before his death, reshaping the understanding of the events leading to his demise. So what are your thoughts on this mystery that is yet to be resolved? Let us know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.